Hi everyone, it's me again. This is Afia Owusu-Pofie with Poders Who Travel. Uh, yesterday was my 33rd birthday, so I'm really feeling pumped up. And um, today's video will cover uh, briefly the contents of our workshops on June 8th and what has happened since that time. And um, after, I'm going to share two important calls that I had today with uh, two experts uh, in the field of distance learning education initiative and how to program with Kotlin to make Android applications. Uh, so I thought our workshop on June 8th was quite successful. Uh, we had about seven to eight individuals, you know, hang out between the hours of roughly 10.30 a.m. through to about 5.30. Um, we grouped ourselves into three main parts. Part one had the task of going over uh, the website's upgrades, which we, they had identified to need some work. And um, business partnerships and, you know, bringing the focus. And so out of part one, this is what they came up with. Uh, they just want our vision to be stated in one sentence. The vision of Coders Who Travel is to inspire and advance the careers of coders in less developed regions of the world. And then the mission, after some hour and a half of just trying to focus this, was to create local networks of coders throughout the less developed world for delivery of training in state-of-the-art programming languages and techniques. And they identify these as our challenges. In lesser developed parts of the world, access to current and leading edge technology training is limited, if it exists at all, and local cultures often do not support the evolution of career networks in this field that can advance and expand a region's technology footprint. Often what is lacking is a motivated individual or organization to initiate the network development. And they, they did a good job of what should our methodology be. So coders who travel will seek volunteer coders who are willing to travel and serve as bridge builders responsible for seeking out and developing a local network in communities in less developed nations. For our target market, informed by the World Bank's definition of what a developing nation is, we realized that we would pick Ghana because Ghana is projected to have the highest economic growth, growth rate in the world. And Ghana is considered a developing country, which the World Bank defines as including low income, approximately $1,005 per capita, and lower middle income between $1,000 per $1,000 and $3,955. And we wanted to distinguish between what a developing nation is and what an emerging you know, nation is. And an emerging market nation is one with high levels of economic development and typically rapid industrialization. And so an example of a developing nation is Ghana, another one is Nigeria, and an emerging market nation will be a country like Brazil. Uh, so from that part, we definitely are going to focus on Ghana. Number two, the partners that we would like to pursue uh, will include SAS Institute, Google, and um, and so that was it for the part one. All right. So to recap, part one was all about our, what to update on our website and what to 
you know, focus on in terms of our vision, mission, methodology, and uh, target market. Uh, I thought part two also had great uh, contributions. Uh, they focused on, you know, the potential of blockchain to empower the youth of Africa, uh, even as, you know, a lot of projections are saying that uh, a lot of impact from blockchain will happen in the retail uh, industry and financial services industry. And so that's how part two ended up wrapping up. Uh, in particular, one person joined us called Michael, who suggested that beyond the United States, Android is really a big deal and that it might be of some value to focus on Android as a mobile application language uh, in our future quota to travel workshops. And that part consisted of Michael, Christina, Harry, uh, no, Nancy, and Amen Raj. Now part three was just me and one guy called Dr. Barry who we really came to a point where we realized that we didn't really need so much of surveys at this point, but what we would need would be focus groups of some 25 to 30 individuals who are dedicated programmers who want to travel. And so this is a great moment to give a shout out that if you're looking to be part of an organization like Voters Who Travel, please contact us. Uh, and that reminds me, part one was consisted of George, Carrie, and Monica. Uh, and so that's how our workshops uh, ended up very impactful, uh, just the ability to bring a focus and narrow it down. Um, earlier today, I got the wonderful opportunity of connecting with uh, Professor Ebenezer Jackson, who is the co-founder of Jackson Education Complex. It is a distance learning initiative in the country that focuses on educating teachers. Uh, when I asked him, he mentioned that they focus on general studies, uh, early childhood, and I actually forget the other one. <laughs> uh, so we, we explored the potential to introduce technology as one of the disciplines where we groom teachers uh, to teach programming languages with, you know, very hands-on and applied focus. So that's a moonshot right there, but we are, we are committed to that. Uh, bringing it home, I thought that discussion was really awesome because I went into that conversation thinking that his distance learning school utilizes a lot of internet uh, during remote lessons, but that was not the case at all. He actually shared that they use more books and bi-weekly in-person meet meetings uh, to, to cover various cur curriculums. And <laughs> we'll just continue. Is it better? Okay. And, <laughs> and that had me immediately thinking of the books. I've actually been doing a lot of ordering from Amazon in recent uh, days. And for him to just confirm that books could be the way uh, instead of, you know, as a way to go around like the internet connectivity problems. And so allow me to show you the books that we picked uh, going forward to, 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 to help with this quotas who travel initiative. So the first is Learning Kotlin by Building Android Applications. Uh, the main author is Eunice Aduchumwa Obuje. Uh, I am so proud of Eunice because I so remember trying to have her lead and facilitate one of the early Java workshops and she was so shy even though her name kept coming up as I would go around asking you know some of my classmates who were guys about who was a solid Java programmer and um, her name kept coming up and I remember taking the time while I was in Ghana in 2015 to visit her in her office and we just connected and after a lot of pep 
talks, uh, units will just be so much, much more confident. And so I'm so proud of her for coming out with this book. This book is going to be the book that we are going to call uh, all the Android modules uh, going forward. I've also come across this book, uh, Everybody Lies, by Seth Stevens, David Dowitz. Uh, title is not as the content is not as controversial as its title. Just the idea that there's a, whole, a hidden treasure in the just the aggregated information on Google searches, and so I can't wait to search for terms like programmers travels to find out, or software engineers travel, data scientists travel to see what that might lead us to. Um, I'm a trained statistician and by this time you should know that I'm an avid <laughs> SAS programmer and um, lately I've been advised through one of my external coaches to focus on my strengths and statistics was always a strength and given that SAS is a strength I'm looking to combine that with uh, this book it's Applied Statistics and SAS Programming Language by Ronald P. Cody and Jeffrey K. Smith. Um, back in 2015, when I visited my alma mater at the University of Ghana Statistics Department, uh, a lot of the lecturers came to me. I actually felt a little bit overwhelmed. They were like, you know, just tell them that we, 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 we can really use some help. And so uh, for me, I gave a lecture at the actuarial science students class of nearly some 25 individuals show up, showed up and I can't wait to go back to Ghana and create a course around this book for the, for the current class in statistics department. Um, this is a personal favorite. When I started learning SAS, my teacher recommended actually the Little SAS book by Laura D. Delwich and Susan J. Slaughter and this one learning by learning sad by example a programmer's guide uh, the teacher who taught me is dr linda davis <laughs> at george mason university i think she really did a great job together with these two books um, i was able to cure myself of not knowing sad you know personal frustration of having had a bachelor's degree in statistics and just using spss which was a great software, but only that in the US, it was more for social science folks. And so I just had to relearn. And that, this, these frustrations is really what drives me to make sure that the next generation of programmers in developing countries uh, afforded you know, the expertise from those of us in developed countries. And Python, <laughs> I got to help build a community of practice um, while with uh, Deloitte and Touche and I can't wait to delve deeper into this book uh, to learn more about deep learning which is um, an area of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, so thank you, these will be our books going forward. Thank you.